Welcome to Lost in Revision. All of our content is public domain, literature, fairy tales, and folklore. We are here to celebrate the original stories, not just read the modern sanitized versions. We post short segments of stories daily and monthly full episodes where we read and discuss popular classics. Come and find us on Patreon to listen to the full chapters early and without interruption. Our goal is to at least break even to cover our expenses, so any support that you can offer to help us reach that goal helps keep this podcast going and you entertained. All of our music is by Nathan Hubble and is used with his permission. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Chapter 12. The Winter of the Blue Snow. Part 2. The weather kept on growing colder and colder, and finally Paul heard a rumor that it had grown so cold that the Pacific Ocean had frozen over. The story seemed so unlikely that he decided to investigate for himself. I'm going to see if it's true what they say about the Pacific being frozen, he explained to his men, and also I'm so homesick for the sight of some regular old white snow that I'm going to look around a little and see if I can't find some. So, followed by Faithful Babe, he set out on snowshoes to the westward. He kept on going until he came to the ocean, but not a flake of white snow could be glimpsed anywhere. The ice on the Pacific looked pretty solid, and so he struck out across it, always on the lookout for some snow that wasn't blue. He kept on and kept on, but he was far into China before he found any white snow. Proof of this may be found in the fact that nothing but white snow has ever fallen in central China. Paul was so pleased over finding what he was looking for that he loaded Babe with all he could carry and set off for home again. When he finally got back to camp again, his men all held a tremendous celebration. So pleased were they at the sight of familiar, old-fashioned snow again. Paul gave each of them a white snowball for a Christmas present that year, and most of them carried theirs around in their pockets for many years thereafter, as proof that they had spent the winter of the blue snow in Paul's camp. Then, if any one doubted their word, they would just pull their white snowball out of their pocket, and there would be no further doubt about their telling the truth. It was while the blue snow was on the ground that the snow wassets were nearly exterminated by Paul's men. The snow wasset is unlike other animals, inasmuch as it hibernates during the summer instead of the winter. When the snow begins to melt as the weather turns warm in the spring, this queer animal grows a pair of strong front legs that end in paws armed with big digging claws. Its color changes to green, and by the time the last snowdrift has melted away, it is dinned up all snug and sound in a hole which it has dug in the ground. There, all covered over with moss and dirt, it sleeps away until winter comes again. Then it wakes up as the first snow begins to fall. By the time drifts have begun to deepen, it has shed its legs in green fur and has grown a brand new winter coat. Its new fur is of the purest white and is very valuable. But as the animal is thus so colored, that it cannot be seen as it wallows about in the snow, it is very seldom ever captured. During the winter of the blue snow, however, the wasset could be easily seen, white against the blue, and Paul's men put in much of their time that winter in hunting the squirming creatures as they played among the blue drifts. Johnny Inkslinger sold many wasset skins in the spring, and the high price he received for these rare pelts did much toward making up to Paul for the poor cut of timber during the winter. The winter was long, but at last it came to an end. The snow melted off, and all the frozen words were thawed out. It was then that Paul Bunyan made a big raft of what logs had been cut and started floating down the river to deliver them. Somehow or other, he and his men got completely lost on the way, and they floated on and on without ever finding out where they were. 
They ran out of food and had to live on a diet of frog's legs for several weeks, when finally and very strangely they found themselves right back where they had started. They had floated with the river as it made a perfect circle, and to this day this exploit of Paul's is known as the Great Circle Drive. It is, in fact, the only circle drive that has ever been made. The circle drive disgusted Paul with the Big Onion River. I'll make no more use of it, he declared. From now on, we'll drag all of our logs to the Mississippi River and make our drives down it, for I'll never send another drive down the Big Onion. And so it was that he cared not a bit when a few days later, a great tree was accidentally felled into the big onion and splashed all the water out of the river. Thanks for joining us today. Check us out on Patreon. The storytime level is only $3, and you can help us meet our small goal of breaking even and covering our expenses. Your support helps pay for all of the things that podcasting requires and helps keep this show alive and growing. If you can't afford to support us financially, go give us a good review, subscribe or follow, and share with your friends and family. Feel free to fact check us and offer suggestions to make our show better for you. You can also send us an email at lostinrevisionpodcast at gmail.com. There's a lot more waiting for us all at the end of the road.